It's Thursday, April 18th, 2024, and I'm Dave Sobel. Three things to know today. T-Mobile and Verizon employees are targeted in a bribery scheme for SIM swaps. DNH Distributing boosts credit for over 600 SMB channel partners to fuel their growth. And the U.S. AI Safety Institute bolsters its leadership with top experts from OpenAI and Stanford, but not without controversy. This is the business of tech. With as many breaches and security concerns as I report in this show, it should be obvious that cybersecurity is not just about technology, but also the human expertise needed to interpret and respond to complex threats. Huntress is focused on elevating SMBs and MSPs around the world. Huntress has a suite of fully managed cybersecurity solutions powered by a 24 by 7 human-led SOC dedicated to continuous monitoring, expert investigation, and rapid response. And the proof is the execution. Huntress is the number one rated EDR for SMBs on G2. Want to know more about the platform? Visit Huntress.com slash MSB Radio to learn more. Criminals are targeting T-Mobile and Verizon employees with text messages offering $300 for performing SIM swaps. The messages claim to obtain contact information from an employee directory. Charter Communications employees have also reported similar texts. T-Mobile is investigating the messages but denies suffering a breach. SIM swap attacks can lead to unauthorized access, identity theft, and financial losses. The FBI has warned about the increasing prevalence of SIM swap attacks and introduced new rules to protect consumers. The LockBit Ransomware as a Service Group has targeted an organization in West Africa using a new variant of the LockBit 3.0 Builder. This variant can generate custom, self-propagating ransomware that's difficult to defend against. The attackers used stolen credentials to gain full control of the victim's infrastructure. LockBit 3.0 has been actively used by attackers since it was leaked in 2022 and is responsible for a significant number of ransomware attacks. Academics from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign have found that OpenAI's GPT-4 large language model can autonomously exploit real-world vulnerabilities in systems by reading security advisories. GPT-4 exploited 87% of vulnerabilities described in CBE advisories compared to 0% for other models tested. The researchers believe future models will be even more capable, potentially surpassing script kiddies' current access levels. Limiting the public availability of security information is not seen as a viable defense against LLM agents, and proactive security measures such as regular package updates are encouraged. Why do we care? This story has been lingering in my head. The risk of a bribe is so pervasive and now so easy. Think about that in your own employee base. On top of that, we have ransomware that can self-propagate and AI models that can soon leverage security research to exploit those vulnerabilities quickly. Basic security hygienes, patching, backups, and authentication are going to become increasingly difficult, potentially to the exclusion of focusing on anything else for most organizations. Planning for when is the new black. Let's review the tactical news. Microsoft plans to allow solution providers in its cloud solution provider program to transfer end customers' new commerce experience subscriptions from one partner to another, providing greater flexibility and a smoother experience for partners and customers. The change applies to direct bill and indirect providers, and the transfer can only be done for CSP license and seat-based subscriptions. This update addresses a major issue that's affected some solution providers since the rollout of the NCE program. Amazon has announced the availability of Anthropic Claude 3 Opus on Amazon Bedrock, along with Claude 3 Sonnet and Haiku. The Claude 3 models are suitable for automating tasks, creating user-facing applications, and accelerating research and development in various sectors. DNH Distributing has increased credit limits for over 600 SMB channel partners in North America, giving them greater purchasing capabilities for larger projects and market expansion. These credit line extensions and extended financing options aim to support VARs and MSPs in areas such as AI, cloud services, security, and collaboration products. 
This marks DNH's largest annual credit extension in the company's history, totaling $400 million for fiscal year 2024. Guards has established a strategic partnership with AI security company Sentinel One, which includes an investment from Sentinel One's venture fund, S Ventures. Guards and Sentinel One will collaborate on technological advancements and go to market strategy to empower MSPs to serve SMB clients against cyber threats. Sonomi has raised $20 million in funding led by Canon, with participation from Flint, S16V, and Alonic. Sonomi's AI powered VCIO platform automates the CISO experience for MSPs and MSSPs, allowing them to scale their businesses and offer high level cybersecurity services. The funding will also help expand their operations, enhance their platform, and deepen partnerships. Why do we care? Sentinel One really does deals with everyone, don't they? I can't help but trip over a way to buy from them. Broad distribution is good for Sentinel One but less for all their partners. Remember that trade-off. It loses its unique nature. Now I'll focus on DNH, which reminds me of the value of financial partners. The pandemic reinforced this as a significant value add, and I wanted to highlight how money is available for partners who need it and also never be the bank for your customers. The U.S. AI Safety Institute, hosted in the National Institute of Standards and Technology, has added five new members to its leadership team. The new members, including experts from OpenAI, Stanford University, and the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, will help execute tasks outlined in President Joe Biden's executive order on AI. They will focus on designing and testing AI models, overseeing agency operations, implementing broader agency strategy, and fostering international cooperation. Ars Technica profiled one, Paul Cristano, a former OpenAI researcher known for his work on AI safety and his predictions of potential AI doom, has been appointed as the head of AI safety at the U.S. AI Safety Institute. While some view this appointment as a risk due to his AI doomer views, others believe his expertise makes him well-suited for the role. The appointment has sparked controversy within NIST, with some staff members expressing concerns about compromising the Institute's objectivity and integrity. His responsibilities will include monitoring current and potential risks, conducting tests of AI models, and implementing risk mitigations. Now, why do we care? If you haven't said it's something controversial, you haven't said anything interesting. I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach here and note he's one of five new voices. To move aligns with the strategic goals set forth in President Biden's order, which aims to establish leadership, reduce risks, foster cooperation in developing and deploying AI technologies. And where are the best places for arguments like this? NIST. Today's episode is supported by CoreView. Your customers need your Microsoft 365 expertise, and CoreView has the only M365 management platform designed for MSPs. Manage hundreds of tenants, automate manual tasks, and monitor compliance all while intelligently comparing to the baseline. With a no-code control approach, CoreView revolutionizes your Microsoft 365 administration. This powerful platform enables automatic reporting and remediation, ensuring optimal performance and security. The best part? You achieve this high level of service without the need for a large workforce, allowing you to focus on growing your business through efficiency. Want to know more? Visit coreview.com MSP and find out more. Thanks for listening. Today is Adult Autism Awareness Day. So I'm doing my part to make you aware. Have a question you want answered? We take those listener questions, send them ideally as a voice memo or video to question at mspradio.com. I answer all those listener questions live each week on our Wednesday live show on YouTube and LinkedIn. Next week, 3 p.m. Eastern. And if you got a comment or a thought, I do want to hear from you. Put it in the comments if you're on YouTube reach out on LinkedIn if you're listening to the podcast. Talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button, follow, or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP radio or 
Buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on this show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me, and I will talk to you again on our next episode of The Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.